everybody, it's your girl Bunny Greenleaf, <laughs> season four, episode 10. It's the last episode of the season. I don't know if I was supposed to be laughing through half of this, but <laughs> we will have the recap of the episode and the review at the end. It's coming up next. <laughs> It's Bunny. So the scene starts where the last episode left off. Grace is still on the stage after she made her announcement that she's stepping down as lead pastor. As she's going down the steps to get off the stage, the rest of everyone in the auditorium is in complete shock. They're looking around like, what just happened? And Grace goes all the way to the back of the auditorium where she stands with AJ. And then they go into the hallway and she asks him, you know, what are you doing here? And he's like, well, what do you mean what am I doing here? I received all these voicemails from Sophia telling me that you've got to do something because my mother can go to jail and I just had to come and Grace was like no 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 what are you doing here and he's like well you know I'm turning myself in Bob Whitmore is back in town and he's talking to Phil and Judy in his office and he wants to know what's going on why has Grace stepped down because Grace was a part of his plan and Phil says I think it has something to do with that son popping into her life so that may cause her not to think rationally so I think that's what's going on and Judy can't wait to snitch and tell her dad well he has this thing for this singer and I know from charity that the boy is over to the Greenleaf house so we know that the son is here and it's possible he's affecting her thoughts and all this other stuff because I know he's at the Greenleaf house and Phil says well you know I suggested to Grace that it would probably be a good thing for her to step down because she lied to the police. She lied and gave her son an alibi who's broken the law. So it really wouldn't be a good thing on her name. So yeah, I might have suggested that she step down, yeah. Bob also questions them, why don't I have majority of the board? You know, I was expecting to have majority of the bo board's votes and I don't even have that. So what happened with that? And they tell him that, look, the green leaves found out about the bribe. So it was really nothing we could do with that. We were kind of locked in that situation. And Bob is so upset that he tells Judy, look, clearly you didn't do what you were supposed to do. So I need you to fly back to Arizona. And of course she's just like, it's not my fault. And he's telling her, okay, look, you need to go back because clearly you didn't do what I told you to do, and you guys are way behind on what I had planned. And so now we just have Phil and, and Bob in the office talking, and Bob says, you know, if you have a thing for this singer, I really don't understand that, because you're the situation and why she's going through what she's going through with Ken. And if you paid attention with the last episode, of course, Judy and her husband Ken are going through a divorce, and he tells Phil, that you really put a hurting on Judy and that's really been, you know, crushing her over this time and that I'm not pleased that it didn't work out between you and Judy either. So it's this kind of this, this hint in saying, I'm really mad at you that it didn't work out between you and my daughter, but at the same time she was married. So mm, kind of confusing there. And Phil says, yes, I, I know, I know. Charity walks into a room where Lady May is standing and looking out past the balcony and saying out loud, all we have left is this house and all we have left is this land. And Charity walks closer to her and says, look, I have no idea why Phil put so much pressure on Grace to step down. And so Lady May says, well, you came into this room to lie to me? Because I'm really confused, how else would Phil have known all of this information? Does he have house bugs? Are there detective vans and people with 7-Eleven coffee cups surveillancing what we say and what we do? Clearly, he found the information some way, somehow. So she's letting her know, I'm not a fool. And Charity says, you know, I never meant for this situation to hurt you. And Lady Mary says, well, you know what? You probably didn't mean to hurt me, but you meant to hurt your sister. You meant to do her harm in some way and all of the foolery that you've 
taken on. And she tells her that I don't understand why you've done all this. And Charity says, I just wanted my life. And Lady May says, your life is my life. And my life is Grace's life. And Grace's life is AJ's. We're all interconnected. And we're all in each other's lives. And we share each other's being. Why can't you understand that? And I actually feel sorry for you that you don't realize that you've just been a pawn in Phil's game. And why can't you understand that? We have AJ, Aaron, and Grace. They're in a room. And AJ's expressing to them, Tomorrow, I'm going to turn myself in. I'm going to do it. I'm going to turn myself in. And Grace is just like, we don't want you to go in. We need to fight for this. And Aaron calls the bluff and says, well, why wait till tomorrow? Why not just turn yourself in today, right now? What is the wait for? Like, I don't understand. And he calls the bluff and does have a valid point. If you're so adamant about turning yourself in and you feel so guilty, why are we waiting until tomorrow? And AJ, you know, I guess he's frustrated from it all and he leaves the room. So we just have Grace and Aaron in the room. And Grace says, you know, there's something that he's leaving out. There's something that he's not telling us. And I don't know what it is. And Aaron said, well, you know, what do you think it is? What's going on? And she's like, well, I don't know, but who wants to go to jail? And if you are, you know, in a situation where you might go to jail, who wouldn't want to fight for their freedom? So it's something that he's not telling us. Marissa is making her way quickly, okay, down the stairs to get to that front door. And Grace is trying to stop her so she can talk to her. And she's like, hey, you know, Carissa, you know, I, I see that you're in a hurry going somewhere. But I just wanted to tell you that, you know, unfortunately, I can't buy you guys out. But And, and, and Chris is just like, yeah, uh, okay, yeah, that, that's fine. I, I'm really trying to get somewhere. And she's like, you know, I hate to tell you that's, you know, in a rush. But I really want to tell you. And Chris is just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just really got to go to the care now. And Grace is just like, well... Is everything okay? And Carissa's just like, obviously not. We see Miss Sophia, 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 and Dante, you know, they buy the car, you know, they pop the parking lot pimping and kissing and stuff, and they bada boot up, bada bada boot up. I'm like, Sophia, what is going on? So we see that they for real, for real, and they sharing all intimate kisses and stuff. I'm like, okay. Miss Carissa is at the doctor's office and she's in the office saying out loud, please, you know, don't let it be positive. Please don't let it be positive. I'm like, ooh, child, what's going on? And the doctor walks in and says, yes, um, your results showed as positive. You have chlamydia. And she's just like, oh. And the doctor says, well, you know, I'm writing you out this prescription and you might want to talk about your husband, about the parameters and making sure that you get through this, this process. And Carissa says, well, you know, I didn't get it. I didn't get it from my husband, you know. <laughs> and she says, well, uh, here's your prescription and uh, don't be intimate in 10 days. And you might want to talk to whomever you were intimate with about this situation. There are a few members of the board that are talking with Lady May and Bishop and they're telling them first they wanted our votes about the board and having the majority, but now they're talking about us making a vote to completely dissolve Calvary as a corporation and Harmony and Hope be its own entity. And Clara, she can make the vote to make it a tie, but we really need you to talk with charity and Lady May says, what did my idiot daughter do now? Like, what is she doing now? So they know that there's gonna be a tie some way and charity is the deciding factor in making sure that they can have the vote that they need that this doesn't happen, that Calvary doesn't get dissolved. Charity sits in her office deep in thought and as Phil walks in, she goes, are you using me? Am I a pawn? just need to know. <laughs> and you know, Phil tells her, you know, be still and know that I am. And Charity says, what, God? And he says, know that I'm your man. She's just like, oh, 
What you want me to do? <laughs> and it's just so sad. But we go back to the area where we have Bishop, Lady May, and the, the other board members talking. And he's like, okay, so I got to convince Charity that we need her vote. And it is very important that she understands why she has to vote the way that she does. Because they're just evil and conniving. And they're just trying to do things to us that are just uncalled for. Rissa is holding her legs tight in bed okay and she reading the bible hallelujah because she didn't <laughs> she didn't got a wake up call and she laying in bed and you know jacob he trying to cuddle with her and get a little something started and she like oh no i can't mm -mm, no don't do this mm -mm -mm. and she telling him no not tonight mm -mm. he's just like well why what's going on and he kissing on her and she just like oh let me just think of a lie she's telling him look i'm on my period and um, I just don't feel good, you know, so no, not, not tonight. And Jacob says, well, you know, I'm sorry, baby. I didn't know. And he proceeds to hold her. And Carissa is just like, ooh, I just need 10 days. 10 days. Bishop, he goes in there to talk to Charity and he's just like, look, I don't know what's going on in your brain. But you need to think about this vote. And Charity is so adamant about what about me and what about my life? And he's telling her, you I just, like, you're not even thinking about your vote. And if you put in this vote, you're not thinking about the legacy that you're going to destroy. Everything that your mother and I worked for, you're just going to give it away to somebody like Bob Whitmore? Think about what you're doing. And if you put in that vote that gives it to harmony and hope, think about how it will destroy us. So think about it and realize that if you vote against us, you'll regret it for the rest of your life. AJ and Sophia have this nonchalant kind of weird conversation. He's packing up his bag like he's getting ready to turn himself in and go to jail. And Sophia's like, so can I email you? He's like, no, you can't email me. Like, you know, it's against the rules when I have a phone. Well, I'm going to write you every day. He's like, no, don't write me. She's like, well, you know, how much money can I put on your commissary? And he's like, don't put anyone in my commissary. Don't write me. Just forget about me. And I'm like, he ain't going to summer camp, girl. He going to jail. Like, I, I, ugh. And this scene just annoyed me so much. I wanted to throw my shoe at the screen. What are you talking about? Like, it's just really, really weird that he's saying that. Like, clearly, if somebody's in prison or in jail, they don't care who the commissary is coming from, okay? Well, you say these noodles came from Trump? Oh, tell him I say what's up. Don't nobody care? That scene was just terribly written. Next, back at the church, and we see that the board is casting their vote, and some people say, you know, yes, they agree, or nay, and we can see that it's split, and we have Charity outside looking through the window like, oh, it's a tie, uh oh And, you know, Phil come out, and he's just like, well, you know, you ready to do this? And Charity's like, do I have to do this? And he says no, but he holds out his hand like, girl, come on, we need your vote. Bishop gets a call on his phone, letting them know that he needs to be seen. And then Lady May gets a call on her cell phone. And she says, that was Bob Whitmore. He says that he wants to talk about the future, which is really fishy. Marissa is in her room, you know, she's like reading a book or something like that. And Jacob, you know, he walks into the room and he's just like, baby, do we have some more of those, you know, those cranberry pills? You know, the ones we used to give to Zora when, you know, she had a bladder infection. And Carissa is just like, mm -mm -mm, no. He's like, no, you know, you remember where we put them? She's like, no, mm -mm -mm, no, you, you, uh, you, you don't have no bladder infection. He's like, what you talking about? How you know? And she's like, sit down. I was... I'm tell you something. <laughs> and she just like, you don't have a bladder infection and there's really no way for me to say this. It's not easy for me, but I got chlamydia. <laughs> and he's like, wait, what? And she says, you know, I have chlamydia. He's like, whoa. Wait a minute. I already, wait, you didn't just say that. Okay, I already know where you got it from. It's Fernando, right? I, I had a feeling it was Fernando when I asked you what you was doing. At the office, you told me it was nothing going on. She says, wait, 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 yeah, yeah, it was Fernando. You know, all of those times that he was like, no, 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 you know what? Don't even try to talk. Just get out. Get out. You wanted to get out of the house so bad, just get out. He's starting to 
pick up her purse and throw her jacket. She's just like, oh no, I'm not going anywhere. All those times that you stepped out on me and you telling me to get out? Oh no, 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 I'm not going anywhere. Uh-uh, so you need to think about that. I am not leaving this house. And he tells her, I don't care what you do, I don't care if you stay at a hotel, you need to get out. And as a matter of fact, you need to get a lawyer because you won't be staying here anytime soon. He walks out. She kind of sits back like, you know, the nerve of him to tell me to get out after all the stuff that he's done. Two wrongs don't make a right, but he got fed up. And she just got on her, her phone and she was just like, do, 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 do. Uh, yes, uh, Fernando, yeah, I got some information for you. Because clearly she was over it at that point. Bob tells Lady May that here's what's going on. I got a new development happening and H and H, we want to continue to expand. So that lets me know that Charity's vote was against her own family. Because the only way that they were able to proceed is if Charity broke that tie. So in that scene, it confirmed that Charity casted her vote for H and H. And Lady May has that look of defeat like, I cannot believe her. She really did cast that vote. And she that's when you see her slump in her chair like, wow. But he proceeds to tell her, look, we're moving forward. And I want you to be the new face of this development. A strong leader who can lead everybody with growth and development. And she says, so you want the black people to build up your church. And you want us to, to, to make it what it is. And he says, no, I want it to be a place for all people. And for all people to come and get the word. And, and you can be the face of that. And she says, you know, before I even give you an answer, before I proceed, we got to do something about Phil. Because Phil has done something to Grace. And Bob looks at her like he wants to turn an ear and listen to what she has to say. Sophia and Dante, you know, they're chilling at his crib and they're cuddling and kissing and things are getting heated. And he says, you know, we should continue this, you know, in my bedroom. And she's just like, I've, I've never done this before. And all of a sudden, you know, Dante, you know, he's just like, well, you know, it's up to you. And if you want to keep going, we can keep going. But if you want me to stop, we can stop. So you just let me know. Carissa, she's talking to her chlamydia boo, a.k.a. Fernando. And Fernando is showing her documentation saying, hey, according to this documentation here, Mrs. Davis, she did leave the land and the home to the Greenleaf family, um, but the will was created a week before Miss Davis was killed in this supposed robbery, which is strange, and the executor is Robert uh, Bucrity, and so that's just strange that that happened. So we need to look into that. And this really isn't looking all that great. But what is the news that you wanted to share with me? And Carissa told, tells him that you gave me chlamydia. And she proceeds to slap him across the face. And I really wanted the slap to come back around and slap her in the face too. But that didn't happen. Grace goes outside to speak to AJ just to ask him, why are you doing this? You know, do you at least want to fight for it? It just seems like you're just turning yourself in. And he does something weird with his hand. He's like, we just don't, we don't have to know why it is. It just is. I'm like, what? <laughs> Lady May tells Bishop the idea that Bob Whitmore has. And she's just like, this is a, this could be a blessing in disguise, you know? Uh, Grace didn't get an opportunity to lead, but now I'm being placed into the situation where I could lead this. And Bishop is just like, you're so blinded by what you want. You don't understand that you're about to do business and you're about to do dealings with someone who's a liar and a thief and someone who's destroyed others. And Lady May is just saying, you know, that's all great and I feel how I feel. And it doesn't matter what you say because I've already told him yes. And Bishop walks out of the room. He is completely done with Lady May. Charity, she's over Phil's house and they're, you know, they're kissed up and they're just chit-chatting, just having a good old time. And, you know, Phil says, well, you know, you don't have to leave. You could just stay here. And Charity says, well, believe it or not, I'm on fashion. <laughs> And Phil, you know, he's just like, well, I, you know, that's fine. I don't mind, you know, you being old fashioned. And he says, you know, when I was a kid, I was really into magic tricks and I love to do all of that. But, you know, it ended up getting burned up. I think he said by his grandparents or parents or something like that. And Charity's just like, oh, that's just so sad. 
and he's just doing little things with his hand. He's like, you know, voila, and I'm like, whatever. And then he just pulls out this ring and he asked her to marry him. Will you marry me? And, you know, I guess she said yes because Charity, you know, she hopped on the D so fast. I thought it was Hot Girl Summer again. I'm like, what month is this? Is it November? But she hopped on it, baby, and they got to, to doing what they needed to do. So I guess that was a yes, child. They about to get murdered. Bill walks into Bob's office like, oh, hey, do you have a minute to talk about the logistics? And he's like, yeah, come on in. And he's telling Bob that I got a deal and I see some new areas that we could take over so far as space and land to develop even more. And they said, hey, just let me know who's in charge, which is me. And Bob is just like, no, 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 no. You're not in charge anymore. And Phil's just like, wait, what? He says, Lady May told me what you did to Grace. And I just thought that was just over and done with what you did. And Phil gets really upset and just says, I've been of service to you for over 20 years. I've done so much for you. And it was all under the thought that I would soon be able to lead my own ministry. And that hasn't happened. What do I have to do to make things right? You just name it. And he gives Bob that desperate inclination that name it whatever it is i need to do to make it right just tell me name it jacob you know he's asking carissa did you find somewhere to live yet because you need to get out and carissa's just like no i haven't looked any uh, at anything because i'm staying put right here i'm not going anywhere and you might want to think about how you talk to me next time and you may not want to talk to me about that ever again unless you want bishop to rot in jail and jacob is just like girl what is wrong with you what are you talking about and she hands him a piece of paper Phil, you know, he makes his way over to the Greenleaf house and it's just unexpected and he just pops over and Lady May says, you know what, well, hey Phil, basically how may I help you? And he's telling Lady May that I came by to give you some news and what you and Bob discussed, that deal that you had going on, it's null and void. And it doesn't mean anything now. And Lady May says, I'll believe that when Bob tells me. And then her phone rings. And Phil says, well, that's him calling right now. And another note, you might want to go ahead and head to the church and get whatever belongings that you have. Because that church will be demolished uh, very soon. And Lady May is just frozen in shock. Like, is this really happening? And to add the cherry on the top... Charity comes down the stairs and greets her man and says, well, hi, baby. And she gives him a hug and she smothers it, just gloating in the fact that Phil is there, someone who's caused her family great pain and grief and confusion and just all of this stuff. But she greets him with welcome arms and says, hello. And Lady May is just like, wow, Charity, I can't believe that you've done this. And then she has the nerve to gloat and to show her engagement ring. Look, Mama. And she's showing her, oh, look, that they're engaged. And Phil says, you know, give us a moment, you know, because they needed some privacy. And he proceeds to go up, to the up the stairs to be with her alone. And they sit down and he tells her, there isn't going to be a wedding. Charity says, well, what are you talking about? And he says, well, there's not going to be a wedding or anything other than that. Um, I'm marrying Judy. And she says, but last night, he's like, I know, I, I know. And she tells him to get out. And he's just like, I'm sorry. I mean, she's just like, get out. Grace, she's outside on the property and she's by the headstone where faith is buried and she's praying to God and she's saying, God, it's just so much going on. We have danger with the church, things that are happening with the church. Um, I finally get AJ back into my life, but now I can't communicate with him and it's hard for me and I can't put two and two together about what's going on. There's so much catastrophe going on, but despite it all, you've always been there and I'm thankful. I'm thankful that I have my family, my mother, my father, uh, Jacob and Carissa, my niece, my nephew, everybody. Thank you so much despite it all. And Lord, just hear my cry. Just help us through this situation. And all of a sudden we see 
a man that is walking on the property that just seems to come out of nowhere. And Grace says, well, hello. And he says, well, yes, you know, I was just walking. And she says, well, how did you even get on the property? And he says, well, I was just walking and, you know, I found, I found this area and I'm guessing, you know, this is your sister. And she looks at him like, how do you know that? She, he's just like, I'm looking at the name Faith, you know, that's, it's a good guess that this is your sister. And I'm looking at the date, so it's probably your sister. And she's like, oh, yes, you know, yeah. And he looks at her with this very deep kind of empty look. And he says, you know, everything has an expiration date. She goes, well, yeah. And just to help you get back on the road, the road is up further this way. And the man says, thank you for your direction. Letting me know where the road is. Thank you, Grace. And she gives that look like, what? You know, she's really confused. And then the gentleman walks off. And it's the end of the episode. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> All right. It's very evident that Bob... Uh, wants Phil to marry Judy as well, not only for image purposes, but Phil is so desperate to get the ministry that he wants, that he's willing to do anything. He's willing to throw charity under the bus that he possibly really loved. It is possible, but it's really evident that Bob forced Phil to say, you know what, you can have this ministry. I see how, you know, desperate you are. I see how badly you want it. We can take this from Lady May. So here are the credentials. You marry my daughter because she's about to be divorced and I, you know, images and, you know, church and all this other stuff. We can't have the lead, you know, pastor be single. You know, it's just, it's very uh, predictable what Bob had in mind. He wants Phil to marry his daughter because... Uh, they have something there, so he's doing that. And so Phil, you know, he's so desperate that he goes for it. That the guy that came at the end was a presence of some sort. Was it uh, a guardian angel? Was it somebody trying to give her a message? It was kind of evident that this is some sort of presence giving her comfort and letting her know that everything was okay. Because it was really creepy and he came out of nowhere and he just looked really weird. Um, but I'm guessing that's what that was. And that was something comforting Grace and letting her know everything's gonna be okay and there's someone with you. You know, we can conclude that. Um, but it was just really, really weird. Um, I don't even know where to begin with this episode. Um, of, I've always said in the reviews for this season that the writing has changed. Uh, it's gotten very soap opera-ish, but it's very entertaining. Uh, a lot of people don't want to hear the truth. The writing, uh, unfortunately, here and there is sloppy. You know, I'm a, I'm a fan of the show, and I'm invested in it because I have to know how it ends. So I'm not going to stop watching it. I really wanted to stop watching it mid-season because I saw how the writing changed, and it got very sloppy, and there were things that just didn't add up. And things that just weren't fluid. Uh, we still don't know where Noah is. Let's, I guess we can all just come to a conclusion that he died. Um, his, he just he thought he was on his way to see his son. And on the way there, he just imploded and disappeared. I mean, we can, we can say anything. He was taken by aliens. Um, he went to the joyous land of the Care Bears. We don't know. He's gone. It's evident that they wrote his character out. And it was done very, very sloppy. Um... Fernando, I mean, um, Carissa, she got her symptoms. He didn't get none. He wasn't showing any symptoms. Was he shocked that she had chlamydia? Confused. Um, the timing, right? Uh, yeah, I, it was just a lot of hiccups. Um, so Dante, is he a good guy now? Is he completely restored? Because he was pretty much a jerk two episodes ago and now he's very thoughtful and even considering Sophia's virginity his personality has just done a complete flip uh did something happen to him traumatically to make him do such a complete turnaround and being someone else um it didn't feel like the finale we deserved it was bundled in a ball, and then we would, the writers just like, you know what? 
Let's just end this, wrap it up, say, just say something. It's, it's done, it's over. Just hurry up and wrap it up, okay? Let's just get to season five. I really feel, <laughs> really feel like that's how the meeting ended. As you notice, this review, this recap uh, for this last episode wasn't as, my energy uh, is different, as you can tell, um, because I was frustrated with how everything was pulled together. They, now, they did a good job with keeping our attention and making us come back for another season. So they did, they do gain a point for that because they were able to pull everything together to gain our, our, our curiosity. There's more things pulling us. We need to know what's going on with the land and with the house. Was there a conspiracy of murder? Were, were there things um, that the green leaves put together in order to get the house, in order to get the land? I guess I'm just disappointed because it was very predictable. All of the viewers, the comments, myself that I've said, and other reviews that you, we just estimated everything. It was very predictable. Um, I really don't know what else to say besides, okay, um, it's just different. It's something about season four that's lacking. It's definitely the writing. It's definitely the soap opera-ish turn that it's taken. Um, the casting director for this season was off. Dante, who's not built or doesn't look like a professional player of any sort, was off. He looks the same height as, Sof as Sophia. It's just a lot where you're just like, huh, what? What's, what's going on? What happened with this character? What happened? Um, it was just all over the place. But it kept our interest in wondering what was going to happen next. Next. Um, I won't stop watching it for the next season for season five because I've watched it this long. Why give up now? Because I want to see how things end. Um, other than that, I'm a smidge disappointed and it's over. And I'm like, when the episode ended and then I saw Greenleaf Returns 2020, I literally went like this. <laughs> literally threw my hands up like okay I, I maybe it's just me it, 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 it I don't know what to say I'm really dumbfounded because I don't want to be repetitive I've said the same thing throughout this entire season the same things over and over hoping and wishing that the writing would get a little better hoping and wishing that they concluded certain situations that have been lingering the entire season that we never got answers for i do understand that the whole point is to keep going for season after season after season but hear me out on this and i have said that this in another review it would make a lot of sense if they wrap everything up, if they conclude everything well, that the Greenleaf franchise should come to a close at the end of season five. Here's why. I'm not saying it should be canceled. It should come to a close, okay? Because there's only so many storylines that we have to wrap up. What's going on with the land? The land. How would the families come together or go their separate ways? Because if not, what would be season six? More drama with the church, church? More family drama that happens that lingers and keeps going and going? With a series, when it's good writing and when it's time to stop, writers and directors and creators to say, now is a good time to stop. Um, because let's just say this season was spectacular. Let's just say this writing had us going through all these different hills and valleys and, oh my goodness, this is so entertaining and I love this writing. I would have still said the same thing. There's only so many different storylines story we can create because if it keeps going, it will full-fledged 100% be a soap opera series. That's what it will be if they keep going past season five. Where's the lie in that? That is how it will evolve. It going from seasons one and three being a drama series, right? To season four, the writer's changing and it's shifting and it's feeling very soap opera-ish. If they don't wrap 
up synopsises and 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 storylines for season five, I don't see why they don't do that. Why they wouldn't do that? It wouldn't make sense at all. It will. It would make everything feel super rushed. Here's the problem: the show has yet to summarize or conclude at least one storyline for one character. It has been just piled on and piled on and piled on. I'll give you an example so I can explain what I'm talking about. Carissa last season had the situation with her ex-husband, correct? Okay. When that situation ended, instead of bringing Carissa's storyline to some sort of coming together conclusion, right? What they did in season four was just feed us conclusions saying, oh, it was over. And you know, Charity, she's play, paying alimony. Okay. Um, that is a very tragic situation with Charity. They didn't give us closure to that very traumatic experience that she had. Instead of bringing that to a close or giving us more information about what happened, we then go to another storyline that's dumped on the top that she is involved with a man who's on the road and she's doing her music so she gets caught up in more and more and more and more all the way up into the fact that season four, we barely see her son. I get they're trying to make it seem like she's so consumed and into Phil that she's forgetting about her son. But as an audience, we forget she has a child. Because it's a storyline that doesn't blend. That's just one example and one character. And I could do that with every other one. Because we didn't get into bishop dealing with his parkinson's it kind of just kind of floated away and then how they mention it again he's holding his hand and we see oh okay he's still dealing with it like it's just it's just different storylines different things that are just piled up on top of each other and with lazy writing they mentioned it with one line to say oh well yeah that you know blah 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 it's lazy writing if you disagree you disagree but if you compare how this, this, this story has shifted and how there's a lot of different things that were just kind of forgotten about from last season and we never revisited visited it. And as the viewer, we were just pushed into forgetting about it and not thinking about it again. No, uh, uh, Sophia's dad, Charity's situation, Bishop and all the stuff that he went through with the IRS and I could go on and on about things that were forgotten about and the writers just said what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the audience forget so we don't have to revisit that and do more writing bingo that's what happened we're not gonna backtrack we're not gonna bring stuff to a close we're just gonna move on to other stuff and it worked on majority of the viewers of this show they didn't argue about it. They said, oh, well, we learned there's something else going on with Grace. Okay, well, let's know she got a son. Oh, okay, okay, let's just roll with that. That's what had happened. And that frustrated me as a viewer. And like, why are, we, why are we doing this? You can get eight seasons out of it if you take your time and develop each character's fluidity because that's what we did before. And it pulled us in. And now the writing is we have to deal with every single character in every single episode sloppy anywho i did enjoy the season because uh it's entertaining and it made me want to come i mean i didn't stop watching it, it made me want to figure out okay what's going to happen with the church what's going to happen with this what's going to happen with that um but the carries are the characters are twisting and turning and it's just like okay well what, what are you trying to do what's the message what are you you know so it's very clear that season five would be predictable as well uh, there's only so many directions that we can go, right? Um, it's the mystery of the will of Mrs. Davis. It's going to be the mystery of what really ha -ha happened um, with this burglary. Okay, we're going to deal with that. 
Uh, now we're gonna, Sophia, uh, her and Zora not talking anymore. Um, and another question, where did Nikki go? She caught that same plane with Noah. That's where she went. For real, where'd she go, y'all? Where did she go? <laughs> did she move out? That's the stuff I'm talking about. Can we take our time with this? Maybe I need to email some of these writers. Somebody tell me who. Come, somebody call Oprah. Cause we're oh, Gail. We're Gail at anybody. Uh, uh, <laughs> Stedman. Stedman. Call your call, call, call somebody. Tell her call me. Tell her we need to talk. Was <laughs> Oprah don't have nothing to do with that. It's just on her network. It's, it's the writers. Who are the writers? Anywho, let me know what you think. <laughs> Subscribe. I bet you like, girl, we ain't subscribing to you. What you talking about? You dogging out the show. Everything deserves, you know, critiquing or criticism. Uh, it's okay to critique a show. It's okay to critique writing. It's okay to say, I didn't like that. Um, a majority of people on YouTube probably won't say this, right? Um, because it's a, it's a, it's a, fan base that they're keeping so if you critique it and you insult the audience then highly likely people won't come back but i feel if you're a viewer you're really a movie buff you're really somebody that loves watching series and seeing how they develop and grow and you can look at different aspects of writing i can go from a game of thrones to watchmen to green leaf to to all these different shows because you compare compare Different fluidity, storylines, how things are developed, every show will, won't be the same. I understand that. But for shows that started to be this and then it turns into this, we're going to critique it and we're going to talk about it. So let me know what you think. Subscribe. And I don't know if you noticed, I subscribe to whomever subscribes to me. And follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, official bun underscore E. And also check out my podcast show, uh, which is called The Bunny Show. And listen to the premiere episode entitled, You're So Not Okay. And that show um, talks about how to deal with mental health, how to recognize it, how social media plays on that. And if you're so not okay, it's okay to admit that you're not okay and start that journey to make everything right. So check that out when you get a chance to. And also check out other series that I'm reviewing as well. Make sure you go directly to the playlist so you don't have to search for a thing. There are plenty of other shows that I'm going over. We have Hulu's original series, Wu-Tang Clan, An American Saga. We have HBO's original series, Watchmen. There's so many more. We have um, Jim Henson. It's the Hulu original series, uh, The Dark Crystal, Age of Resistance. There are so many different shows that uh, is on my channel, and there's still more to come because we have more more shows on different networks that different networks that are starting uh, mid November, in, end of November, all the way to the end of the year. When one show ends, another one takes its place. Let me know what you think. Comment vent let me know how you feel <laughs> and i will see you guys another time that's it bye oh, oh.